Hello everyone, and welcome back to another 3D vlog, and today is going to be another one of my big channel life update kind of videos that I'm just going to start calling vlogs from now on, because that's really what they are. And there's quite a few things on the list today. So, if you're coming here from the Richmond Reddit and you're wondering why I posted this there, Go ahead and hit this time code here that will take you to the section of the video where I talk about the audio of my videos as well as the future of Richmond 3D. The audio in this video may sound slightly muffled, but we shall see about that. With that being said, let's sally forth. And the first thing I want to talk about is the fantastic support I have seen over the last few weeks. My channel has really started to grow a bit more, especially within the last year or so. And I've been trying to keep coming out with consistent content. Like I've said in previous videos, it's kind of a dry spot right now because of the worldwide event going on, which basically means meeting up with other people, conventions, fur meets going to the park, what have you, have basically all dried up. But we're hoping, fingers crossed, that by fall of this year, things can start easing up a little bit, but we're going to have to see on that. Hopefully, things end up being okay. But I just want to thank everybody that has subscribed, that watches these, these videos, that comments, that likes. Uh, subscribing, commenting on a video, liking a video, all that goes a really long way in YouTube's eyes to promoting the content that I do. I noticed that the majority of my traffic comes from Reddit. I think it's like 60% of the traffic on my videos comes from Reddit. So if you're consistently coming from Reddit to watch my videos, I don't know if you're already subscribed, but if you could just take a second to hit the like button, maybe comment, share the videos to your friends as a prank, uh, whatever you want to do to, to help spread the word of the channel. Is there actually is a, another major life thing going on where I am moving from where I was to where you can see me. Not this specific room, but that the house, the building in which this room is in. And it's about two and a half hours away from where I used to live, which is like the biggest move that I've ever had. So, I, I, things aren't really going to change much for me. Um, hopefully, hopefully my success is better. I am moving closer to an area where there are more jobs in the field that I want to get into. I definitely want to try to avoid going back into retail if I can because retail just really ends up being a trap and I I just don't want to do it anymore like I get stuck in retail and then it's just like I, there's nothing wrong with working in retail you know, bills are bills you, you gotta put food on the table I I'm not looking down on it but I, I just don't want to do that anymore. It just, it sucks. It's miserable. I'm not doing what I want to be doing. You know, I, I want to get out there and try to get into what I want to do for a living, which is do videos or photography or editing or anything, anything. I, I'll do IT tech. I just don't want to go back to ringing people up over a register. I, I've done that since I got out of high school in 2014, and I've been spinning my wheels in the mud ever since then that that's my life is the wheels on the car and retail is the mud in which my car is get stuck in so I'm just spinning my wheels in it and while I'm able to to keep my car afloat out of the mud I'm also not going anywhere so yeah moving up here to Northern Virginia to hope for some better job prospects and and maybe go back to school or, or do something I don't know I just I just need to keep moving forward is the big thing just keep moving towards the future and hopefully I will be taking this channel with me as I go the next thing on the list is something that I recently acquired my girlfriend's mom got this for me we were at a, an antique shop of sorts. 
and it is one of these. Whoa, check out that reveal, dude. This is a stereoscope for those of you who don't know what this crazy contraption is. This is essentially the first way that people were ever able to view 3D images. Uh, this is certainly not the first model of stereoscope. There were several kinds along the way. But the first stereoscope was invented by Charles Wheatstone. And basically people would take 3D pictures and they would put it in these special cards here. These like hard cardboard stock cards. And you would look through the viewer like this. And you would like adjust the, the picture here on this stick in order to get it in the focus. This is essentially old school VR. This is what, this is back in the day what VR used to be. But stereo photography used to be super, super popular because of how immersive it ended up being. And I mean, really, when you're looking at these 3D pictures, that's all you can really see. So I can see why it was so popular. I have two cards here. This one here. 1897 is when this image was taken and the image on this card here 1905 I don't want to take it out just yet but yeah 1905 on that card really awesome stuff and the people wanted $75 for this thing like holy crap but once once you get it but yeah stereoscopes have evolved a lot but uh, the most modern equivalent, of course, is VR headsets, and then before that, it's like Viewmaster. So yeah, it's a really nice blending of 3D and immersion technology. It's it's really cool. I've never used one before. I mean, I've used Viewmasters, but I've never used an actual stereoscope, and it is pretty damn cool. I can see why people were very fond of it back in the day. The next thing on the list of things is I got another Blu-ray. I had to send the original one back because it got damaged in transit and they sent me another one for free. And that is this movie, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Now I know this isn't a great movie, but it is a movie from my childhood and I was absolutely thrilled to see that it got a Blu-ray release. I was not expecting that. And on top of that, a bunch of deleted scenes that were considered lost to time were included on this Blu-ray. And if you're a fan of Thomas or you like this movie, I would definitely recommend picking it up. I haven't actually sat down to watch this yet. I did watch a few minutes of the Blu-ray just to see what the quality of the video would be like. It was quite blurry. It was blur blurrier than I thought it would be. And usually with, uh, you know... Blu-rays that image is really crisp and clean, but it's clear that the original film print has not been kindly used or taken care of very well. But it is still it still looks a bit better than the DVD version. I'll I'll say that, and the audio is a bit better. It's just a shame that the video isn't as clear. And this movie was shot on 35 millimeter, so it really should have been like, you know, no you know, no big brainer, um, could have done a 4K conversion, really, if they really wanted to, but I, I don't know what the, the rights are with it, it was, the movie was, like, financed and produced by the, at the time, he was the ex-chairman or CEO of Paramount Pictures, I, I, I don't know, it was, like, Destination Films, Gwame Entertainment, uh, hit entertainment. There's so many different, so many different rights to this film. But anyway, yeah, uh, Thomas and Magic Railroad haven't sat down to watch it yet, but I plan to. I know getting a 2D Blu-ray is like, uh, sacrilege, but I mean, it's, I don't think we're ever going to get a 3D conversion of that movie. That, I mean, the best I'm going to get is turning the 2D to 3D conversion on my TV on and, and hoping for the best. The next thing on the list of things is to talk about my tripod. Uh, I've used this tripod since I started this channel way back, like over two years ago, and it has definitely seen better days. So the first thing that went out on it, 
I know it only has two legs. We're going to get to that. The first thing that broke on it is these things. These right here are supposed to connect to these legs. Like, this one's fine. This one is still connected just fine. But these little bar things, they broke off, and I have no idea how. I put this in my trunk one day, and when I got it back out another day, it was broken. So, yeah, that sucked. But I could still use it just fine. It just had to put the little slots, the little thing into the slot there. And then I was, I was, as I was filming the 100 subscriber video, this leg broke off, and it's right here. And I know this is a uh, shameful excuse to have some pop out in this video, because, ooh, wow, crazy, nuts. This is one of the legs, but it's still, the way that the tripod is designed, I can still use it. Like, I can just pop it up there. So every video you've seen since that video the other day with the 100 subscriber special, I've been using with the broken tripod. But like I said, I can just clip it into there and it, and it works just fine. And as I was filming the, or I was on route to film the Fulton Gasworks part of that other video, the Richmond 3D video, this little piece, I, it fell off, it broke off. I, I accidentally dropped the tripod and that broke off. So this tripod is almost literally on its last leg. Uh, it's, it's still technically usable. I mean, like I said, the, the, it, it, you can put it in here like this and you can, you know do this here you can still move the head it just it's just kind of a pain in the butt on top of doing all the 3d stuff and that being a little bit of a pain in the butt as well though it is worth it another thing i should mention is that i'm using the robert rig it's like propped up on a chair with two cushions on it so it's up to eye level with me and I still haven't gotten the Manfrotto rig. I know somebody has suggested another type of tripod or another tripod to use with it. And one thing I do really want to try to do is find a way to make this Robert rig more mobile. I know that James Cameron has mobile versions of his beam splitter rigs. I'd want to modify it, put like two handles on the bottom and then put a strap on it or you know, a piece of plastic or wood so that I can hold it out in front of me like this and then I can also support the weight of it on my shoulder here or maybe on both shoulders. It would be really cool and go a long way for its use. Even though I am still really nervous about using it, I, this is the most expensive thing I've ever bought in my life and it's also one of my, the most important things I've ever bought in my life. It was a really huge investment not in only trying to figure out how it worked before getting it and also after getting it but uh just monetarily wise so i want to make sure i keep it as pristine as i possibly can for as long as i possibly can but if i'm gonna if cons and meetups come back i, I do want to go out and start using it and i think it'll look really cool and people will be like whoa that's super badass dude because uh, there's some people at cons that have... There's one guy at the cons that has this massive freaking like 8K something camera. It's it's really cool. He doesn't even upload his stuff to YouTube. He has his own secret website that he uploads his con videos to. It's super neat. But yeah. So that that's my tripod situation right now. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the audio in my videos. Yes... I know that it sucks, and the audio in this video might suck as well because I am using my robe as a light blocker. Uh, the light blockers that came with the rig, while they're they're good light blockers, they just they're not fitting with the cameras that I have on there now. I could potentially just make my own light blockers with some foam and cut the foam out and put it behind or on top of the Robert rig, but for now I'm using my robe which will probably muffle the sound and make it sound like crap but i i am a video guy not an audio guy but i know that if i'm going to be a one-man band right now i need to learn to do both i especially with the richmond 3d 
videos. Those were kind of trash, but that was those videos are the first time I've ever really done something like that. Typically, I'd be close enough to the cameras where you really wouldn't have to worry about the audio because the cameras I have have pretty good mics on them. But when I'm out there filming my videos, there's a specific way I want to film them. I want to get as much of the subject in the video as I possibly can. Uh, the final shot of the intermediate terminal warehouse is a good example of this. I wanted to get the entire building in the shot and in order to do that and to make the 3D comfortable I had to film it the way that I did where I'm standing way back. Let me explain that. So as written by the wonderful Phil Captain 3D McNally in his 3D storytelling book, which is an invaluable resource to stereographers everywhere. This book seriously has everything you need to know about doing 3D, not just the technical side, but the artistic side and everything in between. One of the six visual sins of 3D is coupling and decoupling. Let me explain what exactly that means. So, when in real life, we're constantly focusing on things. If you're watching this video in 2D, you are focusing your vision on the screen. But let's do a little experiment. So, here we have a Wii Remote. Now, if you're just hanging out with the Wii Remote in real life, you're looking at the Wii Remote like this. You're like, your eyes are converged on the Wii Remote, right? And... If you look at something way off in the distance, like a wall over there, or somebody's talking, uh, you reconverge your eyes on the new object or the new thing that you want to look at. Now, when you're watching a 2D video, your eyes are constantly converged on the single one plane that is the screen plane. If you saw my intermediate terminal number three, warehouse number three video, and you watched it in 2D, your eyes are just focus on that flat screen. You can move your eyes around, but you're typically only focused on the screen. You're not, you don't really have to couple and decouple like at all. But in 3D, it's not the case because 3D video and film work exactly the way that our eyes work in real life. If you're, when you're watching this video in 3D, if you're watching it in 3D, which I hope you are because if you're not, this ain't gonna make any sense. Uh, take a look at this Wii Remote right here. Your eyes are focused on this Wii Remote. You're looking at this Wii Remote here. Now, try to look at me. If, and then look at the back wall. Your eyes are having to constantly readjust between the Wii Remote, to my face, to the back wall there. Now, this is okay in short bursts, but over a period of time, this can cause headaches. You really want people to be able to focus comfortably. And this also applies in 2D. You want to direct people's vision to what you want them to look at. But if I did the video with me standing close enough to the cameras for you to be able to hear me properly, it would I would either have to cut out the 3D entirely so that you wouldn't be like focused on something that's like right here in your face. And then you're also trying to focus on the the building in the background uh, or I or I, I, I would do it the way that I did it or I'd have to reframe the shot so I didn't get the whole warehouse in there but since these buildings are going to be demolished I was like well I want to get as much of it in these videos as I possibly can even though there wasn't that much information about them so the reason my audio sucks is one, I don't have audio equipment, but I am working on that. I do want to get a lapel mic or something. I need to work on my audio. If I'm going to continue to expand and learn and increase my production value, I'm going to need to work on that audio. That's the big important thing that I need to work on next because I... I mostly have the visual part down. It's the audio I need to work on. So, not making excuses, just explaining why I I chose <clears throat> I chose doing the visuals over the audio. 
I know that people will forgive bad video before bad audio. I've been told that before. And that rings absolutely true. But I, like I said, I kind of just focused on the video side. And I have no college training, no formal training. Everything that I'm doing on this channel is stuff that I've learned myself. Uh, things that I've picked up over trial and error, or things that I've read in books, like this one here. I've read several books on 3D, I've gone through websites, I've seen videos upon videos, and all these different things trying to learn how to make the 3D as best I can, because I want to keep that an exciting experience. But I need to work on the audio too, and that is something, like I said, I will be looking forward to doing in the future. And speaking of the future, let's talk about Richmond 3D. So, I used to live 20 minutes from Richmond, now it's a two-hour drive. So, doing Richmond 3D is going to be a bit more difficult than it used to be, uh, especially because I still don't have a job, and I don't want to keep spending all the gas and to go down there. I want to keep doing the series. Definitely. There's a lot of cool places in Richmond I haven't talked about. We have the Hollywood Cemetery. We've got the Vampire still. We've got Tredegar Ironworks. We have Monument Avenue, if that's still a thing by the time I get around to it. We have all these different things to talk about. you got the museums and the baseball diamond. All this stuff. The racetrack. I, I keep naming all this stuff to talk about. And it, it's just going to be a lot. Uh, I, I've done it, like I said... I went down there, I filmed the Intermediate Terminal Warehouse and Fulton Gasworks when I went down there last, and mind you, that, that was a huge day. We, we drove all the way from North Virginia, two hours to Richmond, it was cold, it was wet, and we did the Fulton and the Warehouse videos, and then we still had to drive 30 minutes to Chester to pack up a bunch of stuff in our cars, my girlfriend and I, pack up the stuff in our cars, and then drive another two hours back up to, to Northern Virginia, so it was a huge day, and I'm glad I did the videos, I'm glad I got it done, someone actually recommended that I go talk about those places, and since they were such short, small videos and places, I just, you know, decided to get it knocked out, but if I'm going to do something like Hollywood Cemetery, it's going to require several days of filming, the Bell Isle video took like four or five days to do the filming, and even more trips up there, on top of the other times that I've already been to Belle Isle, because I've done Belle Isle in 3D several times, I've just never released the videos of it, so the last bit of video, I, I was going to like reuse footage and just do voiceover for the end of the Belle Isle video, but I ended up not doing that, so I drove two hours down to Richmond, filmed the rest of what I needed, and then drove down to Chester, ate, and then drove back up so I could make the video good. And and then it didn't really get a huge response. The Churchill Tunnel definitely got a bigger response, but the, the Belle Isle video kind of fizzled out, which is a shame because I put in so much work. I was so excited. I even got a local, or I even got permission from a local band to use their music in it. I'm like, this is going to be like my magnum opus video. Everyone's going to be like, whoa. And then... Eh, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's weird like that. Sometimes you'll put a ton of work into something and then nobody cares and you'll spend like five minutes at, on, on some random project that you don't really care about. I mean, I care about all my projects, but a project that you're just kind of like, eh, whatever about, and then that everyone's like, oh my god, this is crazy. Granted, the Churchill Tunnel is tied with a tragic accident and the vampire, so people are already going to be more interested in that one than the Belle Isle video, unfortunately, but I'm still proud of all the videos that I've done. I still really like that Belle Isle video. I know I committed one, some of the six visual sins in that one, but I, like I said, I'm trying, and I really like doing videos like the Richmond 3D ones, because it really allows me to stretch my legs, uh, metaphorically speaking, as a filmmaker. It's not just like a random whatever event documentary. So I mean, it's a document documentary it's a documentary but like it's a different kind of thing 
from doing like random con videos or meetup videos or the videos here. It's like an actual structured thing. So I feel like 3D is more part of a storytelling thing than just a random extra thing that I do onto the video. And that's really the, you know, what I want to get across is that it's really awesome for scale and stuff. One of my favorite shots is me standing in front of the train. You really do get a sense of how massive the train is and how teeny tiny I am. I'm a little teeny tiny speck. But with that being said, I still want to do the Richmond 3D videos, but it just it might be a bit between each one because it's it's a lot of time sync. I'll have to find someone I can, you know, stay with while I, I do the videos themselves and then come back up to the Anyway, final thing I want to talk about is I, even though I've been doing a ton of videos, I've also been playing a ton of a game called World of Warcraft. You most definitely have heard of that game before. It's, it used to be really huge, still kind of is really big, but I've been playing that a lot and I decided as I would go on throughout my adventures in Azeroth, I would start trying to get some 3D pictures of that. And I'll, I'll pop one up on the screen now just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to a place and I'm taking a screenshot and then I'm moving slightly to the left or to the right and then taking another screenshot and that creates a stereo pair and allows us to see the world in 3D. So I'm going to continue to do that the best that I can. Uh, the game kind of keeps pushing you along so I really just need to find some time to sit down, figure out all the locations I can take you know, I want to get screenshots of, and then I have to find, like, steady, even ground in the game that isn't, like, slanted or on a hill or anything, so the stereo pair comes out right. So, yeah, that's something that I may do just a one video or a series on, because there's a lot of places in Warcraft to take pictures of. Anyway, I just want to thank you guys for continuing to support this channel, to watching my nonsense videos, to keeping up with it i really like this 3d review series that i'm doing and hopefully you guys continue to like that as well uh i haven't really decided what i'm gonna do next i almost consider doing like an animated movie and then a live action animated live action but who knows there's a lot of great 3d movies in my repertoire that i want to talk about so maybe the next one will be how to train your dragon or hugo you know both of those are on the list anyway thank you guys for watching i really appreciate all the support like i said if you're coming in from reddit or anywhere go ahead and like the video leave a comment it could be about anything something in the video it could be completely unrelated you could tell me about the sweet potato casserole you had the other day i don't know just do something anything send the video to your friends as a prank I'm really trying to get out there and network and put my stuff out on LinkedIn so I can, you know, get more notice on there. I actually have had people come from LinkedIn that have seen my stuff. So hopefully at some point somebody that's still part of the industry or somebody that is like some higher up at some firm somewhere is like, I like the cut of your jib, kid. Come in and we'll talk about business. So yes. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, and you have a great day.